Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to a deeper dive into African American literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 16, Fran Ross. Like Jordan Anderson, who we profiled in Episode 5 of this series, Fran Ross's literary reputation is based almost entirely on a single work and emerged largely after her death. Whereas Anderson's letter to his former owner may not necessarily have been intended to be read as a work of literature, there's no doubt that Ross's gloriously bizarre 1974 novel Oreo was meant to poke a finger in the eye of many of the literary tastes of its time. Fran Ross was born into a working class family in Philadelphia during the Great Depression, but earned a scholarship to college. The degree she earned from Temple University prepared her for a subsequent career as a copy editor in several major New York City publishing houses. While thus employed, she worked for several years on the manuscript of what became Oreo, the rollicking story of a young woman of mixed Jewish and African-American heritage in search of her white father. Published by a small feminist press, the novel soon faded into obscurity, but it has enjoyed a new life in the spotlight since 2000, when it was republished and cited as an influence by younger African-American writers, including Paul Beatty, Matt Johnson, Danzy Senna, and Marlon James. Ross briefly worked for the Richard Pryor show as a writer in the late 1970s until her untimely death in 1985. This brief excerpt from the opening pages of Oreo gives a quick taste of the linguistic and cultural gumbo that Ross cooks up in that book. It also alerts the reader from the start that she doesn't consider many, if any, topics off limits to her satirical sense of humor. First, the bad news. When Frieda Schwartz heard from her shmuel that he was A, marrying a black girl, the blood suffed and staggered in all her conduits as she pictured the charoscuro of the white satin chupa and the Schwartz's skin. When he told her that he was B, dropping out of school, and would therefore never become a certified public accountant, Reboina Shalolam, she let out a great geshrei and dropped dead of a racist my son the bum coronary. The bad news continued. When James Clark heard from the sweet lips of Helen Honeychild Clark that she was going to wed a Jew boy and would soon be Helen Honeychild Schwartz, he managed to croak one anti-Semitic Goldberg before he turned to stone, as it were, in his straight back chair, his body a rigid half swastika, discounting, of course, head, hands, and feet. Decisions, decisions. After much soul and Neshama searching respectively, Helen and Samuel decided to marry and live in his hometown, New York City. Samuel wanted to be an actor. Furthermore, because Helen was a math freak, obviously gifted, Samuel wanted to have Helen's child, or rather, he wanted her to have her slash their child. Helen did not mind. Pregnancy, she felt, would give her time to sit and play the piano and do her head equations while Samuel was studying intermediate walking and talking at drama school. For more information about Ross and her novel, follow the link at the top of this page to an article in The New Yorker by Danzy Senna who, by the way, will be getting her own profile in this series later on this week. And happy Mardi Gras, everyone. Don't forget to laisser les bon temps rouler. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.